In this video, I'm going to discuss the discriminant, which is a part of the quadratic formula. So you'll notice right here we have the quadratic formula, which you can also find the derivation of that in another video. But the discriminant is just going to be the part inside the radical, this b squared minus 4ac. And it does not include the radical, it's only the radicand here, the stuff underneath the radical. So depending on what b squared minus 4ac yields, you're going to know what kind of roots that the quadratic equation is going to give you. So we have a little table or a little chart here that we can use. So your discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And if b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then we know that our quadratic equation is going to have one real solution. We'll talk about more what that looks like here in a bit. If your discriminant is greater than 0, so it's a positive number, you're going to have two real solutions. And if your discriminant is a negative number, it's less than 0, you're going to have two complex solutions. Okay, so what does that mean, this two complex solutions? Well, if your discriminant is negative, let's go back to our formula. If your discriminant is negative, this b squared minus 4ac will be underneath this radical, and it means you'll have a negative underneath the radical, which is going to be an imaginary number, which then is going to set up for complex solutions. Okay, well, let's just take a look at this first example here. We have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. So my value of a equals 4, my value of b equals negative 12, and my value of c equals 9. So if I were to plug this into b squared minus 4ac, it will tell us what kind and how many uh, solutions we'll have. So in this case, b squared, so we have negative 12 squared minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times 9. So this negative 12 squared is 144 minus 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 9 is 144. Well, hey, that equals 0. So in this case, my discriminant is 0. So if we look at our chart, when the discriminant equals 0, we're going to have one real solution. Well, why is it going to only yield one solution when the other two yield two solutions each? Well, because, let's think about this very logically. Because if your discriminant is 0, it means we're taking the square root of 0, which is 0. So when you add 0 to something or subtract 0 from something, it's not going to change it. So the solution that you'll get is just going to be negative b over 2a, because all of this stuff is 0. Well, if we were going to go ahead and finish out this equation, we know the answer is going to be x equals the opposite of b over 2a, because the rest of it zeroed out. So your solution will be the opposite of b, so 12 over 2 times a, which is 4. So 12 over 8 is 3 halves. So the only solution to this quadratic equation is 3 halves. In this second example, we have 3x squared plus 2x plus 7 equals 0. So I'm going to find that the value of a is 3, b is 2, and c equals 7. So if when I plug this into b squared minus 4ac, I can find out how many and what type of solutions this equation is going to have. So b squared is 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay, well 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 7 is 84, so it's going to equal negative 80. So that means it's less than zero since it's negative. So we can look at our little chart here. So when it's less than zero, it means we're going to have two complex solutions. Well, if we think about this logically once again, when we have the quadratic equation, the opposite of b plus or minus this square root of the quantity, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, the discriminant is the portion underneath the radical. So if it's negative underneath the radical, we know we're going to have an imaginary number underneath here, but along with these real numbers, so it'll end up being complex. So it'll be plus an imaginary number and minus an imaginary number. So this video is not so much about solving these, but more about talking about the discriminants. So I'm not going to go through and finish this, 
but you do know that because the discriminant is negative 80, that it's less than 0, when you solve this, you'll have two complex roots. In this third and final example of the discriminant, we have 15x squared minus 8x plus 1. So we're looking at an a value of 15, a b value of negative 8, and a c value of 1. So when we find the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, we're going to get b squared, so negative 8 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 15, times c, which is 1. So negative 8 quantity squared will be positive 64, and 4 times 15 is 60, times 1 is 60, so minus 60. So that equals 4. Well, 4 is positive, so he's larger than 0. So let's take a peek at our chart one last time. And when our discriminant is greater than 0, when it's positive, I'll have two real solutions. So I know that whenever I go ahead and do the quadratic equation, that b squared minus 4ac part that's underneath the square root, it'll be a positive radicand, which means I'll get a real number. So because the plus or minus out front of that, I'll get two real numbers. So the solution, when your discriminant is greater than zero, so when it's positive, is you're going to have two real solutions.